There we go. Okay, could you just say that again? All right. For the recording. Good evening and welcome to the April 8th meeting of the Lowell License Commission. Uh, Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Chair Chairperson Dakota? Yeah. Commissioner Donahue? Present. Commissioner Howe? Here. Commissioner Krieger? Here. Commissioner McCarthy? Here. Five present. Number one on the agenda, please. Acceptance of the minutes of March 25th. Commissioner Kriga. Uh, I uh, move we adopt the, uh, the uh, minutes with an amendment for the businesses that we have uh, approved a hearing for. It reads that we approved the, uh, the license application. Like it says, Commissioner Howe made a motion to approve the application by Sterling, uh, Sizzling Kitchen. I think we should say, uh, uh, made a motion to approve the hearing for Sterling Kitchen. And second by- uh, Three of those. Seconded. seconded by Commissioner McCarthy. Any discussion on that uh, comment? Mary, you good with that? Sure. Okay, good. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Next on the agenda, please. Application for secondhand motor vehicles, used car dealer, class two, from Damaso Motors, LLC, Juliana De Silva Damaso, manager for premises at 50 Perry Street, open lot approximate uh, 5,436 square feet and office. Do we have the client present? Is the applicant here? I don't see anyone by that name. And nobody there. All right, why don't we just put it to the end of the agenda, Carrie? Sure. All right, Mary, next on the agenda. Special events permit for amplified outdoor public entertainment. Robert E, special events coordinator, case cultural affairs and special events, 50 Arcan Drive. Sound system for live music at Kerouac Park, May 8th, May 23rd, June 12th, June 27th, July 10th, and July 25th, noon to four at Kerouac Park. Is the applicant present? Yes, I'm here. Hi, who am I, who is that? Uh, Roberto Day. How are you today? Good, how are you? Good, tell us about your, your events. Yeah, so it's just gonna be a, a series of afternoon concerts um, at Kerouac Park. Uh, throughout summer. Uh, there's not going to be any alcohol involved. Um, it's just going to be uh, just, um, you know, afternoon events. Um, uh, and we're going to use the stage there, uh, the container stage for music. Okay. Obviously, uh, that's it what, in May, right? So some of the uh, restrictions may be lifted with government. Yeah, we're... So. Yeah, hopefully uh, we'll be able to allow more people. I think um, the limit right now for outdoor events is 150 people. So unless we hear otherwise from the state, we're gonna uh, work with the guidelines uh, that we have. All right, that's fine. Questions or comments from the commissioners? Move approval. Move approval Second. by Commissioner McCarthy, seconded by Commissioner Krieger. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, I would second. like to add. I would like to add one thing. Uh, I forgot to actually include rain dates. Um, so this was discussed afterward. But so we're planning. We have rain dates for one week after each scheduled event. So I don't know if you want me to send you um, those dates as well. Actually, why don't you do that um, and send them to the attention of uh, Celine Gettings Perfect. in our office and CC. Uh, uh, attorney Janess as well. Okay, well done. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, ma'am. Public hearing on the application for Sizzling Kitchen, DBA, Sizzling Kitchen LLC, um, Form Tuan Nguyen, manager for all alcoholic beverages, restaurant license for premises at 602 Merrimack Street. First floor, 5,500 square feet for restaurant and bar and basement for storage only. Do we have the applicant here? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Fong. Yes. How are you today? 
Okay. Okay. So um, I do remember you at your other location where you had, a, I believe, a beer and wine license. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So now you're going for full alcohol? All yes. Alcohol? Okay. Um, are you you're the manager of record? Yes. Okay. Uh, have you been TIP certified? Uh, not yet. Okay. When do you plan on doing that? Um, as soon as I know. <laughs> if, if we're approved, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. All right. Um, I'll leave the floor to any commissioners for any questions. Just, I just have one question, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, the young lady that's uh, speaking, she was the manager of the, la the other location. Is that correct? Yes. And you held the... Uh, the license, you were the manager on that license? Yes. Okay, fine. I'm familiar with that location and it was a nice, a very nice place. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments from the question? I just have one comment. I want to thank her for the delicious food. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Was that delivered to you, uh, Commissioner Howe, at home or? <laughs> no. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. Oh, you have to open the public hearing. Oh, thank you, Kerry. Sure. All right. That's one of my trademarks. Okay. <laughs> At this time, we'll open up the public hearing. Anybody like to speak in favor? In favor? In favor? Hearing no one, that portion of the public hearing is closed. At this time, we'll open up the public hearing. Anybody like to speak in opposition? In opposition? In opposition? Hearing no one? That portion of the public hearing is closed. We have a motion on the floor, I believe, by Commissioner McCarthy. It was seconded by Commissioner Howe. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Song, you're all set. Want to wish you the best of luck. The food is, is awesome, as Commissioner Howe has stated, and uh, we wish you continued success in the city of Lowell. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. All right. Ms. Sheehan, next on the agenda. Public hearing on the application by Boston Tonight, LLC, DBA Trend, Alfaterios El Critos, manager for all alcoholic beverages, restaurant license for premises at 15, 19-25 Merrimack Street, first floor, 5,622 square feet for restaurant and bar and basement for storage only. We have the applicant here? Yes, I'm right here. Where are you? I can't see you. Good evening. I'm right here. Um, so Eleftheros is um, under the name Lawrence Criticos, and we're also joined by Evan Criticos, who is also a manager of Boston tonight, and I am representing both of them. Amanda Flores. How are you, Amanda? All right. I'm doing well. How are you? Very good. Tell us about your venture. Great. Um, so I'll just do a quick synopsis, and then any questions can be, you know, directed to Lawrence and or Evan. Um, so. Lawrence and Evan are, are brothers who have started Boston Tonight LLC and um, are planning to open a restaurant um, doing business as Trend. Um, Lawrence is the proposed license manager. So the idea behind Trend is that it's going to be a pop-up fusion restaurant that stays ahead of culinary trends while also working to build community. And so it'll do that by ha featuring a rotating um, selection of chefs with rotating menus, signature staples, and food and drink pairings. Um, so Lawrence and Evan seek a full alcoholic beverages license in order to accomplish this. Um, so Lawrence and Evan have both been in the restaurant and entertainment industry for several years. Um, and they've been able to watch past employers of what's worked and what hasn't worked both in Lowell, Somerville Bo and, and the Boston area. Ultimately, um, Lawrence and Evan have decided to start their own restaurant um, and have chosen Lowell because, you know, as Lowell High School alum, alumni um, and residents of Lowell, it's important for them um, to really stop a trend that they've seen um, of mismanagement and underutilization of downtown Lowell businesses. Um, so they seek the opportunity from the License Commission to be part of the wave of you know, great new restaurants um, and to work with the city on doing so. Now this, uh, is this the Dudley's location? Or? It is. It is, right? Yes. Okay. Um, can you give us uh, some of the background of uh, both the uh, applicants and you said they've had some past experience in the- in Of course. The... Um, so they worked at Garcia Brogan's um, in the entertainment side. Dudley's um, in its early stages 
Bar 74 in its early stages, um, Whitehorse Tavern, Wild Rover, which are both you know, closer to Boston, um, Applebee's, and you know, Lawrence has been um, TIP certified, so has Evan. You know, they're very interested in you know doing things by the book and not being like their predecessors in those spaces. Um, you know, crowd manager certificate has all been obtained, and obviously, Lawrence, if you'd like to, you know, speak to that. Um, I'll yeah, I'd love, I'd love to hop in because you make me sound so great and so amazing. <laughs> this is the best. Like I've sound. Thank you so much. I appreciate this intro. Um, but first and foremost, I have to say, this is my second meeting being on here. Um, the first one, I got to see you all work together. And I got to say, being on the second one, the efficiency you all have, the ability to just network together and just move. Uh, and I, I admire it because I've gotten to talk to Mr. Wynn a few times prior to uh, this call. And when I found out he retired, I was a little heartbroken because he was, uh, I had just won him over. You know, he was such a, he was such a business-like man. I had really just asked him so many questions because I'm looking for great mentorship from people within the city of Lowell. So I was a little heartbroken we retired, but I appreciate you all getting so quickly back to this because we, uh, you know, we're trying to make our dream come true. So it, it means the world to us to be able to have this meeting as quickly as possible. So I thank you all for this call. And uh, I look forward to your questions because I, uh, I always get the vibe that anybody I talk to the city because we work with certain locations and we've done certain things. Everybody kind of kind of looks at us as like young and reckless and we're going to repeat and we're going to be doom and gloom similar to what they've seen in the city of Lowell. And uh, we, we, we completely understand it. And when we got a part, when we started doing our uh, restaurant stuff with our parents all our lives and then the entertainment stuff, what we saw in Lowell was there was a lot of opportunity for growth but there was no real like gold standard for restaurants. There was, there was no real like, uh, well, let me say it this way. When we've talked to the people within the city, what we have found is that there's a lot of people allowing underage mishap. They're having issues with proper management and we didn't want to do anything like that. So when we started seeing these things, we started pulling away and started doing more events towards Boston and Laconia, New Hampshire. And we joined programs like Community Teamwork, e for all and SCORE. And we wanted to make sure that we started to work with the people in the area that knew how we should function because we were successful when it came to the entertainment business, our parents had a little success in the render restaurant industry, but we lived it all our lives. And when we saw Lowell, because we grew up here, we've been fortunate enough to travel and be in different areas like New York City and do events on Wall Street. And we've done events at Gillette and we've been fortunate enough to do things with UTech and Boys and Girls Club. So we're always trying to network within the city because we're looking to, to be much more than anything else has ever been. That's why um, she spoke so great in the beginning about all the things we want to do, but I just want to be honest in saying that I know your concern is underage. So what I can tell you from not only speaking to our mentors at these programs, but from what we know in terms of wanting to build a long-term business, we're not trying to play in that direction. We understand it's very short-minded. It's only people trying to make a cash grab and get out of the game. We're not here for that. We're trying to work with the programs that we actually went through that helped us get the funding for this location. And these guest chefs that Amanda was talking about, these are actual entrepreneurs coming out of these programs that we're gonna bring into our venue for three months and train them how to run a restaurant along with featuring their food as specials. Cause we wanna help entrepreneurs in the area feel confident in post COVID times that they can still be successful. And because of the stress that comes with not knowing, taking on the debt, signing the lease, there's so many people who are frightful of the market. And as someone who drives Uber and Lyft right now, has been in the DJ industry, has seen the restaurants, I've been fortunate enough to work with many different uh, organizations within the city of Lowell. We just know that we want to be the gold standard for the city by creating something that we'll have a great restaurant, our pop-up fusion idea. I can explain the food to you in a little bit. I was, just going, to ask you that. I was just going to ask you that. Your attorney, yeah. attorney Flores uh, brushed upon it just briefly. I'm trying to get a full understanding of it. Sure, sure. Is, yeah. this a, is this a Sunday through Saturday type of thing? Is a, yeah. So if I walk into your restaurant, what, what am I sure. going to see and what's going to happen there? Sure. So we're looking to be open from about five to 10 for most days. We're trying to back into the season and kind of see how the market is doing. So we figured we'd start dinner hours and then from there eventually do brunch and then come back into like lunch hours and kind of see how the market is doing. But we'd like to focus on when you come in, the experience will be something like this. 
we're thinking about taking the 10 to 15 local foods, something like hamburgers, crab ragoons, french fries, these type of items, and changing the way they are presented to you. So where most people are coming in and they're getting like, I'll show you like a kid's meal that we're going to be doing. So most kids will come in and they'll order like a bowl of mac and cheese. And what we're going to do is we're going to serve the mac and cheese in the shape of Pokemon or Tetris pieces. So what we're trying to do is just take really classic food that people like in the area, like crab ragoon. We'll take that and instead of serving it in the traditional way, we're going to serve it in cubes and create a little pyramid out of it. And then instead of serving like a side of fries, we're going to choose French fry towers where you'll have like Cajun fries and wrinkled fries and you'll have all the different sort of fries. So what we're trying to do is be playful with food because what we're seeing now post COVID is that people not only want good food and food that they can trust and love, but something that wows them a little bit, something that makes them want to pull out their phone, share their experience. So when you're walking into the restaurant, what you would get is basically a traditional 10 to 15 item menu. That would be the local classic favorites. And then it would be presented to you in a very type of way that would have volume. A lot of just, we want people to really be excited about their food hitting their table. We want people to enjoy the experience of hitting when food hits the table. Cause we find that people go out now and their experience isn't as exciting sometimes. So we being servers and dishwashers and doing all the whole bit, we just want to really create a good, cool basic menu food experience that's going to have some showmanship to it mm. okay uh, i think I, I think i got a pretty good understanding uh commissioners um let me ask you this uh is there an entertainment uh license on this or are we just strictly uh food here we will be doing entertainment licenses and yes. what, and what are your plans for that so right now we're working with different things like um, there's some running marathon organizations that are going on and different events that um, we are currently trying to be a part of. So we would like to be able to one, do things with them, host events. We're working with, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with like Drake at House of Pizza. They have like a foundation there that we're also working with. Elia and his family, we DJed their Thanksgiving events a few times. So we'd like to host events where we do stuff like that. And then late night wise, what we're trying to do is get the local market. What we find is when we were DJing, it was such a demand for college kids that the local market really didn't feel like they had a place to go because it was so overwhelmed with the underage market and just that type of vibe. So we're trying to create more of a local friendly. I went to Lowell High. I went to Middlesex. My brother went to school here. We have a lot of friends who, you know, we go to jujitsu programs around here. We do a lot of nonprofit stuff and we feel like they don't have a place where they can go and really enjoy themselves locally. And we find a lot of people who are our friends telling us like, hey, we're going to go to Boston. And we don't like that. We don't, as much as we love Boston, we DJ there. We're, we're Lowell. Like we love Lowell. And that's a nice 10 minute drive home doesn't hurt either after the event because I live in the Islands. So okay. Uh, All right. I'm going to get uh, let the commissioners ask you any questions that would be pertinent to the issue. Commissioners? Sure. Uh, I have a question. One of my concerns is, uh, as happened in uh, one of the establishments, which has since gone out of business, they shut the place down with someone passed out in the restroom. Uh, that kind of attention to detail is very concerning to me, or the lack of attention to detail. Uh, have you uh, thought about that uh, kind of incident? Yes, actually, uh, I'm very glad you brought this up because this is not the first time we've actually heard of this incident. And what we've told uh, not only our mentors, but anybody we've talked to in the past is that um, our main focus is making sure we have proper security, proper protocols, proper people in place. And what we have found is we want to have security over by the bathrooms to always be watching anything that might be going on that any of the bartenders might be missing. Any of any, just the overall idea is to making sure we have proper people in place to never have a crack or crevice in the area that goes unseen, whether it's cameras or security, there's eyes everywhere. So there's no sense of, um, we're being irresponsible. Like we want to make sure our eyes are covered, our, our butts are covered. You know, I'm sorry. I was going to say another word, but I, I stopped for a second. Um, but yeah, we just, uh, I'll say it to you this way, because I, I, I'm glad I actually got to talk to you because I did a little research on you, Mr. Cregan, and uh, the, the aerospace management. I'd love to talk to you about that sometime. I'd love to know a little bit more about that. I saw that you had that in LinkedIn. But um, yeah, in terms of just that aspect we're trying to make sure our security is going to be actual security we're not just hiring our friends we're going to get a security company and they're going to come in and we're going to make sure that those type of behaviors and that uh neglect on not looking at your venue doesn't happen with us 
Bartenders all tip certified, Florence? Uh, yes, they will be. And we're actually going to also have a smart bar that's going to automatically pour drinks. So then that way there's no over pouring or, un, you know, anything, any fears of those. Um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with uh, smart bartenders, but basically it'll just be instead of a drink taking like, uh, you know, a minute to a minute and a half in the transaction, it'll actually only take like seven seconds and everything is super sterile and clean, which will be perfect for COVID. And then at the same time, every single pour is going to be exactly the same. So you never have to worry about inconsistency in any drinks or over pouring. Commissioner Howe, Commissioner Donahue, Commissioner McCaffrey. I have, I have some questions. Uh, first, I appreciate the concept and the work that you put into this. I have a few questions. So sure. on your LLC, the LLC that is running this uh, restaurant called Trend, um, on the Secretary of State's website, it says nightclub. We run entertainment company, the DJs, and promotes for different nightlife venues. So my question to you is, do you have, do you or your brother have any experience with running a restaurant and running a bar? Yes. So Martha, it's nice to meet you. I, I'm so happy that you work with your dad in a family business for over 30 plus years. That's so cool to like see, by the way, it makes me very happy to see family-based businesses. Um, when it comes to experience in the business, yeah. So when my parents came here, we were like a very immigrants point. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but like there was a point where we're like, we lived inside of a restaurant for the span of a year. That's how embedded we were in restaurants. If that kind of gives you an idea of like growing up in the industry, since I was young, it was either go to work or go to school. There was no in between. If you were sick, you know, so um, yeah, I grew up in it. And then I also worked at places like Applebee's and local uh, places like Bin F Big Fin in Florida. Just, I got a, I, my brother and I have been fortunate enough to work in different venues of all different styles. So we've been, you know, we've, we've, we've seen that. And then we're also going to be focusing on networking with bartending classes so that every bartender that we bring in, not only ourselves, or ourselves, but uh, everybody in the future, we're currently working with CTI because they have a fund that will help us tr get training for them through CTI. Right, so um, thank you very much for the comments on um, my father, I appreciate that. Um, one other question I have is the problem that we've had before with, with restaurants or uh, that have DJs and entertainment is the young people coming in and with fake IDs, out of state mm -hmm. IDs, what policies and procedures do you have in place to make sure that no underage person is going to be served alcohol? So we're getting a scanner. We're gonna have a scanner initially at the door and uh, that is our main focus. And then obviously making sure we have proper security. And then our goal is as nightlife kind of comes back to life, cause we're not sure where it's really gonna stand. We're kind of focusing on the restaurant aspect being the hit. We're not sure where nightlife is gonna be with COVID and kind of where everything is at the current moment. Um, but we figure as time goes on, we'd also like to hire a police officer or detail at the front door because we understand the number one issue with underage IDs is that they're out of state IDs. And when you see the cops there, you have the ID scanner, they stay local and any other type of trouble stays away. We've just found that. So that's kind of how we figure we'll go about it. You had thank mentioned, you. Um, I apologize, Commissioner Howe. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you had mentioned about a security detail. I, I guess the what. What I'm worried about is the outside premises at Dudley's <clears throat> and having entertainment out there. You said you're going to have secure security control outside there when you have entertainment. Yep. Yep, yep. We're going to be doing all that. So our focus is we're looking at when the venue gets up and going, we're going to have anywhere between 10 to 14 security guards at all different shapes and sizes so that the crowd always feels comfortable based on the situation that they might have to handle, you know. Um, so when it comes to the patio area and the indoors, we have kind of looked at the layout of where we need to have security and make sure there's no angles of any, like there's nothing we're going to miss in any way. So yes, when it comes to the outside, we will be doing that, but we're also focusing on doing a lot of things more like silent discos and stuff like that. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, where like they do like headsets only and you're just walking around with the headset, the music's not really playing outside. If that makes sense. I don't know if you've the ever seen age, something like age, that. I mean, you're talking about security and that maximum, you know, at 14 sorry, sorry. On at, at a time. That's a lot of security. Are you, is this, are you gearing your business more to the 21 to 28 year old age group? Or because when you talk about 14 security personnel all at once on a Saturday night, that, that seems like, uh, 
a lot. <laughs> if I sure, may, sure. So uh, I think, yeah, yeah. sorry, Lawrence, I think, um, so I think that that was also in regards to um, some of those fundraising opportunities that Lawrence was talking about, or, you know, for those charity works, where really, if, you know, COVID, let's say restrictions lapse, um, and get better over time, if he can have, let's say the patio during a day event, be filled with people. I mean, certainly, especially in a fundraising charity event, he would want that kind of security, but I don't think Lawrence was meeting 14 people on a normal night, but Lawrence, please. No, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that based on the capacity and what's available to go in there, if it's required for us to be at maximum security, we can be. That's kind of what I was saying. From talking to uh, David Fuller, he actually did our walkthrough with us when he came to the venue, and uh, I'm not sure if you're, I'm, I'm assuming you know Mr. Fuller, but I apologize. Uh, when he did the walkthrough with us, he just kind of explained to us what our capacity would be reduced wise and kind of the angles we want to look at. So that's why I was saying 14 security guards, meaning based on the potential of how many people we could have in there, we want to make sure that all angles are covered. So that's how many people we would have in there. Now that's not based age wise, that's based on plan wise of how many people would be in there. Because our focus isn't like I explained, like we really want the local market. We want the people who are between the ages of 25 to 40 to really be more of the frequent people that we see there because we understand like those are the ones you can have loyal people with. They have consistent jobs. They're the people who will come out and they'll enjoy their local pub and bar. They don't want to make a fool of themselves. So I, I understand your concern in the sense of, I just want to show you we're serious. We're not messing around. We've done our homework and we want to talk to everybody we possibly can to make sure this comes together. All right, thank you very much. Commissioner yes, McCarthy. Uh, what's, the, what's the capacity of the uh, patio? Uh, so as of right now, when I look at the previous sign, because we haven't uh, done it with Mr. Fuller since then, um, it was, I believe, 200 and change, closer to the 300 mark. And what about the inside facility? It was similar to that. I believe it's, it's between the 500 to 600 mark. That's why we said we would be prepared to have multiple security guards. Um, at that level of people, because we feel like that is a lot of people to have only like four or five security guards on right. for. And, and so, a um, detail too. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes, right. yes. Sure. Yep, all that. Commissioner mm -hmm. Kriega. I'm good. Commissioner Donahue. If I might, first, uh, we're talking to uh, Lawrence, but Lawrence, are you LF Terrios? L yes. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate you saying it so well. Everybody normally butchers it, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, that's your legal name. Uh, right. Yes. Uh, when you first started the presentation, I was sounding, it was sounding like you were a restaurant. But as we go along, it sounds like we're more drifting into nightclub. What is, what is, where, where are we going with this? Is it going to be a nightclub, do uh, you think? No, for us, the angle is really the restaurant and getting the entrepreneurs because we're trying to link them with these programs. If I, I'm not sure if um, you're familiar with like CTI, but they actually gave us the micro loan for this program. And we were going to work with Middlesex and then creating an incubator kitchen inside of our program for this concept of helping local entrepreneurs getting experience in opening a venue before opening a venue and then helping them find funding through these programs. So I just want to make I, where I'm explaining is that no matter what people we have in based on what time of day they show up, we will always be prepared. Now, our focus is making sure that this restaurant, the pop fusion food concept that takes off and then the entrepreneurship program, because what we're trying to do is I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with smack in tacos, but we had an entrepreneur who was in one of the programs we were in that we helped get into Garcia Brogan's before Garcia's Brogan shut down. And it actually ended up doing really well and they got some local attention. And that's kind of where this concept merged for us where we're like, hey, we can help our friends. We went to school with these guys. They got some attention, then COVID happened. It shut everything down. Maybe we could really create something where we work with e for all CTI and create this program. Well, what you were talking about at first was you opened from five to 10. Correct. Is, and then at 10 o'clock, what happened? It becomes a nightclub? From no, we would still do food. I'm just saying five to ten most days, and then Friday, Saturday would be the ten to two. Thursday, Friday, Saturday would be the ten to two traditional like late night hours that Lola allows. But we would do food pretty much up until one o'clock, one thirty. All right. Okay. What type of uh, music are we providing? So 
What we specialize in is understanding how to read a crowd. So we can do anything from 60s, 70s, 80s to current. And uh, we call it music memories. What we do is we play the best parts of each song and select the very, like, uh, I'll say it this way. We play the hooks. We play the most popular part of a song and then we transition to the next song of the most popular part. So we're an average DJ is playing anywhere between 50 to 100 songs a night. We're playing 150 to 300 songs a night. Because our goal is never to tailor to one specific group. It's to mix it up so that you always feel a party. So whether you're playing disco one set, then it's hip hop, then it's pop, then it's, uh, you know, some type of rock. We're always interchanging based on who comes out. So I'd like to say everything, but predominantly in this area, we see a lot of pop, rock, hip hop, hip hop, that and dance hall. Like that seems to be what low crowds tend to like. Okay, because Commissioner McCarthy was part of Dion and the Belmonts. I don't know if you knew that. I hope so. No. No, uh, you know, I saw that. Uh, I saw I mean, that you've done, you've done background. In a band. You've done you've done background yeah. on everybody here, so I figured. Well, yeah. Well, I would love to talk to you about your Comcast deal because I used to sell Comcast and those fudgical stickers. I love RCN now, but we can't. So I, I believe that was you, right? Was that was that? Yes. Was, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. No, comment. So, anyway, no comment. Anyway, anyway, I'd love to get RCN and Lowell. Anyway. Uh, so All yeah, right. I apologize. Uh, I'm rambling here, but I, I did some homework because after seeing you guys the previous week, I thought you guys were a machine. I love the efficiency. I'd love to set you up as part of mentors for these entrepreneurs that we're you trying to put you in these stop while you, you better stop while you're ahead. But we love you guys. And I know that comes weird from someone you've never heard before, but we appreciate the opportunity you're giving us now. So it means the world. And, you know, we just want to prove ourselves. Obviously, it's a uh, it's a place that's had some uh, some rough times in the last few years, and uh, but when it's operated well as it was probably seven, I would say seven eight years ago, um, it's an asset to the city, and obviously you you know, you and your partner or you and your brother are trying to make something out of this, and you know obviously we want the city to grow and make downtown a better place for other people and something. Uh, quite unique like this, I think would be fine. Um, it's a huge responsibility, Lawrence. I mean, you know what's happened there in the past. Um, so, but you know what? Everybody needs a chance and everybody needs a chance to succeed. So um, I'll be voting for. Um, public hearing. And I was just ready to open up a public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, we'll open up the public hearing. Anybody like to speak in favor? In favor. In favor. Hearing no one, that portion of the public hearing is closed. Anybody like to speak in opposition? In opposition? In opposition. Hearing no one, that portion of the public hearing is closed. What is the wish of the body? Move approval. Move for approval by Commissioner McCarthy. It's seconded by Commissioner Howe. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I any opposed, Lawrence? Want to wish you on behalf of the uh, Little License Commission. Like to wish you the best of luck. Uh, if you need anything, um, we are here. Um, oh, I'm gonna reach out to all of you. I, I'm going to blow up your emails. I hope you don't mind. And uh, before Lawrence, I let I you want, go, I don't want you to ever talk to me again. How's that? <laughs> Good work, I hope it will never be I'll back. Tell I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Let me at least send you all music. Okay. Let me all send you music. And that way you understand how nerdy I am about being a perfectionist about for, for music. And uh, I'd love to talk to you all some more. So it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. Good Thanks. luck. Best of luck. Have a great rest of your evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mary, it's almost past my bedtime. <laughs> Public hearing on the application by Sinesta International Hotels Corporation, DBA, Sinesta Select, Boston Lowell. Michael Lassad, manager for transfer of all alcoholic beverages, restaurant license for premises at 30 Industrial Avenue East, 5,400, 132 square feet for a three-story, 122 home room, uh, room hotel with a first floor lobby, market pantry, restaurant, lounge, 32 guest rooms, Service bar, kitchen, and service area, pool and courtyard, second floor, 45 guest rooms, one suite, meeting room, third floor, 45 guest rooms. Thank you. Michael, I see you up there. How are you? How about myself? 
Doing well. New to Lowell. Um, I know it's kind of a carousel over there with managers. You just coming into Lowell? No, actually, I've been in place about eight and a half years. And now you're becoming the manager? Or, or? No, actually, I've been, I've been in place. It was the courtyard manager for about. Oh, uh, uh, that's right. I apologize. That's right. Just change names. You're going to give me that spinners uh, thing that's behind you? Or? <laughs> Uh, it was in our gym, actually, uh, but uh, as a merit, they said I couldn't have it out, but uh, I couldn't, couldn't get rid of it, so I put it in the office. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, Kerry, the paperwork look good on everything? Yes. Yeah, they're fine. But yeah, it's a, it's a corporate transfer of ownership, yeah, is my understanding, just, so nothing substantive is changing, just the corporate, corporate structure thing. behind but, it. Yeah. Questions, comments, uh, commissioners, for Mr. Lassad? No questions. Hearing no one, motion by Commissioner Donnie, seconded by Commissioner McCarthy. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Republic okay. hearing. You're, you're kidding. <laughs> That's 0 for 3. <laughs> 0 for 3. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh. At this time, we'll open up the public hearing. All in favor. At this time, in favor. In favor. Hearing no one, that portion of the public hearing is closed. At this time, we'll open up the public hearing. Anybody like to speak in opposition? In opposition, in opposition, hearing no one, that portion of the public hearing is closed. Commissioner mm -hmm. Donahue, go right ahead and move for approval by Commissioner mm -hmm. Donahue, seconded by Commissioner McCarthy. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. I'm glad I did that. Mr. Lassad, you're all set, sir. Thank you very much. Hope you have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. If I can get this public hearing thing straight, I'll be fine. <laughs> you only have one more to go. All right, that's good. No, there is, well, there is, is one it? more to go. That's is it. One? That's, That's it. it. That's the it. Last, the last one was removed from the agenda because they had no butter notification issue. And how about oh, Del Masco? That's yeah. that one, right? Come oh. in. Oh, oh, the first, like one. Martha, first one. Yeah. Looks like Martha got kicked out. I'm letting her back in. Okay. Uh, did the applicant from the first agenda item no carry? No, I just I just checked and there's no one, um, there's no one else in the waiting room. No. Okay. They were notified, so I'm not sure why, what happened. Okay, is Martha still back here? Because I don't want to deduct her pay, that's all. I back. I drove by uh, the uh, 50 Perry uh, used car dealer and they had cars for sale. Do they have a current license or do they not have a license? Good question. I do Perry not have pay? an answer to that question, unfortunately. Kerry, can we get uh, inspectional services to check to see if, uh, in fact, there is a license in place? Yep, and, uh, we'll do. Send somebody down there. Yep. Appreciate that. No now, problem. I'd like to just bring up one thing uh, relating to the uh, three applications we had today. Can the city, uh, can the license commission, can we require that the new owners, like the Lawrence, that we don't know, uh, provide us with a resume? You know, because the application themselves are very limited in their information. They are. And, I don't see any. I don't see any issue with that. I mean, you can ask any questions you want, and so if you if you want a resume, you can you can ask for that. I think we should have something in writing. I'll bring it up. Uh, put it. I'll get it on an agenda as an agenda item someday in the future. Okay. Thank Great. you. I'd also like to talk. Ahead, about, I'd also like to talk about the schedule. Uh, Ryan had sent us a schedule at the end of last year with all the dates and all the dates were in my calendar and we were supposed to have a meeting next Thursday, not tonight. Right. So I'd like to get back on that schedule. So the next meeting would be April 29th. You got that, Kat? I, yep. We'll, we'll take care of it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. If we can, if we can, uh, maybe we resend that out to, for the remainder of the year. Absolutely. So make we make sure everybody's on the same page. Thank you, Martha. Also, um, why why aren't we on TV anymore? I mean, is it really that boring? Like last <laughs> time, last time we had a hearing, you know, Ed Markey. They had a tape of Ed Markey, and I'm just saying, my elderly relatives don't have anything else to do, and they want to watch me. <laughs> I, I I somebody has to watch you, Martha. <laughs> Thanks. <Mary. laughs> I tie that to city life being shipped. Uh, shoved off of LTC and since I'm part of City Life Show they probably decided to shove this off too. No, it was before that, Cliff. Oh, okay. It was before that incident. So I was just wondering. You know, I know last time there was, I forget what, but there was some other meeting that was happening at the same time. I can't remember what the meeting was. Tonight, it, it was a signals cross issue between the law department and LTC and they 
you know, weren't, weren't willing to change their programming. No, the Harry, they meeting. haven't, they haven't taped us the night la Ryan's last night. Wasn't, wasn't on TV. It's, oh, wow. It's been months since we've been on. So, okay. Well, I I'll, I'll follow up with them on that it, too. But, okay. Thank you. All right, so you're you're recording this way, so you'll you'll forward this to LTC and make sure we get back on the uh, replay schedule that they yep. have on the website. Absolutely. All right. Any other loose uh, fruit hanging? Nope, we're good. All right, so we're not going to be we're going to be April 29th then, right? Yeah. Um, April 29th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, one more thing before I move the German. Uh, on the 29th, do we expect to have information from the city with regard to license fees, funds from the federal government, uh, other issues? We, you were going to reach out to the manager's office because that's not the law department doesn't have any information about that. So I thought that's what was discussed last time. Have we forwarded that to the to uh, Eileen, city manager? I, I have not. If you would like me to, I can. I thought that you were going to do it directly because it was coming from the commission, but I'm happy to reach out to her if you'd like. I know because I know Mary's filling in for the for the secretary uh, that we I would assume is going to be hired shortly, and that would be something that the secretary would do for us. But if uh, if you don't mind, I know you have nothing to do during the day. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. That if you could pass that on to the city manager's office. Sure, absolutely. I'll uh, I'll I'll reach out to the manager tomorrow and and tell her that you were looking for that information and hopefully we can get it turned around before the 29th. Thanks, Carrie. Appreciate sure. it. Sure. That'll get us back on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Motion by okay. Commissioner Krieger, seconded by Commissioner McCarthy to adjourn all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Everyone have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Bye, you. everybody. Bye. Check your chat. <laughs>